if I try and give you an, an example, that's probably the best way of doing it. Um, the typical way in which most, <laughs> most organizations approach um, their business models really dates back a couple of hundred years uh, easily without trying. This is the typical business model. So most organizations, oops, most organizations, the way their business is supposed to work is like this. Okay? Go. <laughs> okay, so the way their business works is like this. Okay? Our business, our staff, our customers, shareholders, government suppliers. We give goods and services to customers. They give us money. We give some to the shareholders, some to the government. We give suppliers money. They give us stuff. Our staff take the money. Is that it? That's how most businesses are structured. These are what are called entities. These are the groupings from whom you can transact or share things with. You see, it rolls right the way back to the days when we moved everywhere on horseback and we didn't have mobile phones and things. Because this would have been a standard transaction. I give you service, you give me money. Does anyone here use Google, YouTube, Twitter? Do you pay them every time you... No? Why not? Surely you get a service from them, you should pay them. You no? do pay them. It's just a long-winded way around, isn't it? Who pays them? The people whose um, sites are being clicked up. They pay them because it's pay-per-click. So they'll charge you. Google's customers. And then what happens? You go to their site and you don't buy anything. But the customers to Google in terms of revenue, are they advertising? Are they paying advertising? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just looking at it a bit differently. The question is, which entities should you include in your business model? Most people are still running a really simple model. These days, everywhere you go, you know you can create groups of people, communities who, could, who will give you money for, to be part of it with a fee structure. Uh, who knows? You know, they, they want to be associated with what you're doing. They will often give you money for something, for the badge. Who knows? Customers, great people, wonderful. Then there are things like our customer suppliers. You know, <laughs> so could, could you give your customers a service and then charge their suppliers? Is that possible? Advertising, revenue from broadband. You think, are these things possible? I don't know. Um, integration between yourselves and your staff. What other groups? What could you give them, and what would they give you money for? Uh, when you start looking, give me an, an industry, airline industry. Um, airline industry, what happens is you often end up paying for the seats for the travel. Is that fair? Is there anyone else who would give money to the airline companies? What other entity might give them money? Ryanair have shown the ways that they carry advertising on the, the front, back of the seat in front of you. You pay for the food. You pay for the privilege of getting your bag. Yeah. Deep flight magazines for the yeah. sponsor. Yeah, flight magazines. If you're a very high prestige aircraft, uh, airline and you go to a low prestige air, uh, airport, shouldn't they pay you for legitimizing them? They do. they do. So there are many sources of revenue. And what, what you find is often we're not exploiting all of them. You need to think about all your touch points, every entity you integrate with or touch or come close to. And just ask yourself the question, mm, could they give me some money? And even funnier, could somebody else's customers be interested in supporting you? I don't know how, whether that's how people see it, but business models really need rebuilding. Um, they're all so boring. Uh, classic transaction stuff, you know, membership models. Let's say you're selling um, uh, equipment, uh, you're a manufacturing company, and you're selling equipment. And I have a real life example of one of my, my colleagues has a, 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 a client who sells equipment. And equipment sales are going down. And they go, no one's buying our equipment. And we say, well, why are you trying to sell equipment? What else could you sell to people? And the truth is, people will give you money for, um, oops, for uh, five reasons. Do you have any idea why people give you money? Any, any idea? What, what are the reasons people give you money? Can I do a blue Peter on you? They'll give you money if you give them something physical. That's very old. They'll give you money if you provide them with help, advice, or information. They'll give you money if you give them access to somebody else. Like, for example, the communities. Many people belong to clubs so they can meet other famous people. They'll pay for that. They'll give you money if you give them 
an aura, a brand, a feeling they're special. They'll give you money for that. They'll give you money if you take away risk from them. So somebody else can worry about it. These are the typical reasons people give you money. There's a sixth one, which is also so they don't have to pay so much tax. But I didn't put that on there because I don't want to encourage that. Okay? But this is classic way. So you're selling a piece of equipment. You're selling equipment. No one's buying it. So why don't you sell them insurance to look after their machines so when they go wrong, you'll replace them? It means they're not paying you 100,000 every five years, but they're paying you 20,000 pounds every year. Risk removal. Does that make sense? So not only have we got the, to think touch points, who could we get money from? Advertising revenue, getting money from people who are supplying somebody else and want to be associated with us. But also, check you're doing the whole offer. When I audit organizations, the funniest thing I find is they get so hung up on one element. So if you're in pharma, you do good drugs. Could you provide services to help people to learn how to use them for doctors, for patients? Could you have a website which makes people it easier for people to understand their illness? Could you charge? Or could you actually make sure they are part of a user group so they know who else has the disease and they can go and talk to them? And there's a meeting every Friday and they pay 50p to go and Maybe not for pharmaceuticals, because that's a bit mean, but you see what I mean? Or could you actually say, do you see where I'm taking you? So once you start thinking new world thoughts, everything opens up. I did tell you, it's all in here. The difficult times aren't just the environment. It's also us. So that's two ideas I've thrown at you. I particularly want you to think about this one. If you think about the business model one, great, but often you might not be in a position to change your corporation's business model. But this one, you can influence. <laughs>